Okay, folks, here we are back again looking at augmented reality with Unity and Euphoria. This is carrying on from the first tutorial where we used an image marker and we placed a 3D model. And when we press play, our webcam is going to turn on, look for our image marker, which is this printout, and then place the virtual model in the image in relationship to the image marker. One of the requests that I got was, how can we animate this? So what I'm gonna do here is the first of a couple tutorials that are going to show you how to do that. And in this tutorial, we are going to take this astronaut and we're going to have it land on top of the image. And without any further ado, let's get started. So you probably have your scene looking like this and your image target should have the astronaut as a child of the image target. I'm gonna go ahead and select the astronaut and I can go to window, animation, and animation, which will open up our animation window. And with that selected, it will say, to begin animating astronaut, create an animator and an animation clip. I'll go ahead and say create. I am going to create a new folder and call it animation which is what I usually do where I save all my animations. I'm gonna call this astronaut land, press save. And now we have to tell it what properties we're looking to animate. So I'm gonna say add property. And in this case, this is a prefab and the root is what I need to change in order to have the entire thing manipulate or move. And if I open that up, I'm gonna look at the transforms and I'm going to wanna to change the position. There we go. So now that I have this showing up, and if you've done this and it's not showing up, one thing that you could do is uh, filter by selection, turn that on and off, and you should be able to see it if you're not already seeing it. And what we're gonna to wanna to animate is the Y position. In Unity, the default is to have the Y be the vertical. And so what I'm going to do is move to another point in time, and I'm going to add a key on the Y position. So I just did that by right clicking and saying add key, and I move the time by clicking up here on the top and moving this back and forth. That's called scrubbing the timeline. And in this instance, we want the starting to position to be something like Let's try 50. And then when we come down here to 30 seconds, we want it to be zero. So a keyframe, this is how a keyframe works. There's a point where it has data and another point where it has data and it interpolates. So over the course of 30 seconds, it's going to play the animation and our astronaut will fall and land. Okay, let's move that out of the way. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's say file, save as, and I should be saving this in my scenes folder. You can see I've got some other scenes working here. So it's gonna call this astronaut land. Go ahead and hit save. There we go, fantastic. And now let's test it. So it's loading up the webcam and it will find, there we go. It's finding my image target and then the astronaut is landing. And unfortunately, it's looping. It also seems like it's coming down a little bit fast. So we're gonna make some modifications here. We're gonna select astronaut, position Y, 50, so this 50 is currently at 30 seconds and we can just move that out to one second. And it looks like there was a keyframe there that I've overwritten. So let's go ahead and just press play on that again and see how that's working. I think that's actually even worse. Um, okay. It seems like it's falling more slowly. That can work. Um, it looks like it didn't put these. 
I didn't put these in my animation folder and my animation folder isn't actually here. Okay, I should clean that up. Let's create a folder and call it animation. Let's select these two and move them to animation one. Okay, it didn't like me creating that folder in Windows. It would have preferred if I created it in Unity. Um, and on one of these, we both have we have the the astronaut animator controller, and the other one we have the astronaut land animation clip and it's saying loop time and we actually don't want time to loop we want it to enter the scene and then we want it to stop on the last keyframe there we go so our astronaut falls and lands on the marker everything looks great unfortunately it actually isn't great because i'm going to remove the marker and i'm going to press play And when I bring the marker into the scene, you can see that the astronaut is already there. So unfortunately, what's happening is when Unity starts running the application, all of the animations are starting. And so this astronaut has already been animated and dropped into the correct location while it was off screen. And now when I put the marker on screen, it's no longer animated because it's already been stopped. So one of the things that we're going to look at is how can we actually have Euphoria and the Euphoria commands communicate to Unity and tell it to not play the animation until the animation is needed. But before we do that, I want to look at this idea. So if you have the marker and there's nothing there, it can be a little confusing. So for instance, if my, oops, wrong one. If my animation clip, which is currently from position 50, let's change that to position 100 and say, um, what if this was actually farther farther out so let's scale out and say what if this took and this isn't a minute this is um, it's a second it is fractions of a second it's not a whole minute we can tell that because of how fast it's going So this is gonna be much slower. And that actually seems like kind of a nice speed when it actually lands. But there is a long time where we're looking at the image and there's nothing there. So if I was building an AR application and I was having someone test it and they were moving the camera around and they found the marker, but nothing happened and they had to wait all of that time for the astronaut to show up, they might think, ah, something's not working, or they might think something is broken. So what the other thing that we could do is, let's go with assets. Um, I'm going to pull in a new material. So I'm going to say, and this will be something that I'll set up for you to download as well. You should be able to find this on the information on the video. If I go to assets, import new asset, and I just go to my, my base folder here. I have something called loading GIF. I'm going to import that. Brought it into animation one. OK. Um, and what I really want this to be is I feel like I'm forgetting which of these ones I, I had set up. Um, I would think that it would be a sprite. I, w 
want no filter on this. And this is has an alpha. There we go. OK, so I've set it up as a Sprite 2D. It defaults to a single Sprite. Um, I've turned off the filtering. We don't need to filter this. It's a very small image, and it will look better with no filter. Um, and I've also set it to be RGB alpha. Uh, it has an alpha channel. It's a white image with an alpha channel so that it looks like a rotating arrow. Um, it's also 240 by 240, so we could actually make this smaller, 256 by 256, um, and it will look a little bit better. Okay, so I have my, my loading image, uh, and I'm going to create a new material. So create material, and the albedo, which is the it's really the specular highlight, but Unity uses it as the, the main color map. We are going to pull in loading, which is our image right here. We're also going to change this from render mode opaque to cutout. And that means that we're now going to have the same transparency from the image on our material. And then I'm going to create a new game object of type 3D object plane. And I'm going to place this where the astronaut is going to be landing, which is 0, 0, 0. Uh, and I am going to actually, let's pull it over to the side first. I'm going to use the material and place that material on there. And then I'm going to move it to 0, 0, 0. So if I hit play, I am going to get this little graphic in the location. Oh, I forgot one thing. My apologies. We want to make sure that we, and this is a great example, we always have the plane parented to the image target. All the objects that you want to show up when you see the image target should be parented to the image target. There we go. So that's a great reminder about why you need to do that parenting. If you don't do that parenting, it won't show up in the right location. Okay, I'm feeling like this is a little bit too small. Let's try 222. Two, two. Okay, that seems like it's about a good size. Uh, and we've learned how to animate. So I can also select this plane and say, got the window, animation, animation. We're creating an animation of this plane. We're going to call it loading rotate. We're going to add a property of transform rotation. And we're going to start here. We'll go to, let's say, one minute, sorry, one second. And we're also going to use the Y. And we're going to try and change this to. Um, 360 would be a full rotation, but 359 means it's just shy of a full rotation and is better for the way that it interpolates. Oh, did I? I put that at zero. It should be zero at zero and at the later timeline, 359. Okay, so that should be rotating as we can see there. It might be a little bit of a good idea to have it slightly above the image. Getting a lot of Z fighting there where we have two planes that are at the same location and the computer doesn't know which one to render, so you get stuttering between the two. So now if we press play, we'll load up our webcam. We will see the loading image immediately, and then the astronaut lands. Uh, it looks to me like my arrow is going the wrong way. So if I go back into this, I go here, 
I can also use these tools over here to jump to the, the end or to jump to the next keyframe. I'm thinking this needs to be negative 359. And let's try testing that again. And it should be going the right way. There we go. So we've got a quick little loading circle. And we have our astronaut dropping into sight. Uh, those are great first steps for getting us started. Uh, next, we're going to look at the scripting that is required to trigger these when Vuforia recognizes an image target. All right, so join us again for our next video to learn those next steps. Thanks a lot.